let's talk about rise. What is rise? That is rise. like the topic of the day. And That's anybody right. going to Sapphire, this is the topic of the day. <laughs> everybody talking about anybody at SAP, this is the topic of the day. So what is, I mean, I get this from customers all the time. What's rise? So rise is probably the third or fourth iteration of SAP trying to go to a SaaS version of the s mm -hmm. but giving you the flexibility of on-premise s which means all the features of s So SAP has basically two flavors. One is S4HANA Cloud that works for very small companies or companies which have very standard business processes. Typically, every SAP customer does not fall in that category because we love to customize SAP. I know. <laughs> yeah? and, and one of the reasons why SAP became so big was because they gave you a framework and allowed you to customize it. Yes. And that's the reason why you and I even have a career today, right? <laughs> I know. It's, it's very clear, right? And, and, and it's not a bad thing because... If a customer had to build his own ERP, he would have had, he would have spent maybe 100 times more money than today, right? Because of SAP, SAP gives you a huge chunk and then you modify it and you extend it and you still have a fantastic middle half a house that they say. Get the best of SAP, get the best of my industry and my company, put it all together and then I'm good, right? Right. With, with RISE, what SAP is trying to do is trying to tell the customers that you know what, you want to get a standard software. You want to get a SaaS license. And the only way you can get a SaaS license and have the flexibility on-premise is to go with RISE. Hmm. So what does RISE give you? It gives you business transformation as a service. It gives you a license cost of SAP packaged. It also says that if you have an ECC license, we will basically reduce that ECC license as your S4 increases. So you are balancing of your cost. We all know that SAP, you have a perpetual license, but you're still paying a significant amount of money every year for support, 20%, 22%, or whatever right. it is. And that's a huge amount of money that you're paying. Yeah. And some of it is shelf where you're not even using it, but you're paying support for it. And S4HANA is there. And as you start using S4HANA, your cost is going to go up in S4HANA. Mm -hmm. SAP in RISE will decrease your ECC cost while your S4 cost increases to kind of balance the cost. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, SAP is telling you that we will take care of hosting it either on AWS, Azure, GCP, or now IBM Cloud. Mm -hmm. So it can be hosted in a hyperscaler of your choice. Mm -hmm. And the managed services will be taken care of by either SAP for AWS, Azure, GCP, or some SIs or IBM when it's an IBM Cloud or some of the uh, hyperscalers. Mm -hmm. So the managed service means creating the landing zone on the cloud, migrating your SAP uh, ECC or S4, putting it on the cloud, mm -hmm. upgrading the whole basis work is done by SAP or IBM okay. in this case for a, a price that you pay for rice. And then installed the by DXC. Installed by uh, DXC. Yeah. And, and, and DXC is a different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the customer or the SIs can mm -hmm. then take care of the rest of it, which is the application development, the application maintenance and uh, the upgrades and all of that. So the basis work of setting up the environment and the low level uh, work of doing the connectivity with the setting up of system is taken care of by SAP and a lot of the transformation is then left to the client. So for that, the client, for the client, it is okay. Yeah. I don't have to worry about the basis work and the underlying infrastructure. I just mm -hmm. care about I can I get a SAP GUI that I can log into or a Fury portal uh, portal or URL that I can log into and start configuring my SAP. That's where it starts. Got it. So then you can still configure it anyway. You want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still configure it. You can still modify as not modify. I mean, you will put as much custom development as you want. There's no restriction to it. Uh -huh. But SAP does recommend that you at least upgrade once a year, a year once a couple of years, but. You, the minimum is you have to upgrade once every five years because today you know the 2015 mm. is out of support, 2016 is getting out of support end of this year. Right. So if you're on 2016 on rise, you will be forced to move to 2020 or 2021 because SAP is not going to support you S4HANA 20, I know, 16 mm -hmm. or 1610 next year. They'll not support it. 